I'm a regular guy that lives in a normal house, drives an average car, lives in a working class neighborhood. I'm out here for extraordinary adventures. I've committed my life to work as hard as I can to travel the world and understand what is out there when many of us do not. I work, I budget, I travel, and I live. And I come home to do it all over again. I've swam off the Alaskan coast, ridden a camel in Morocco, toured Swedish canals, and biked down a volcano in Ecuador. And I'm out here adding more because someone's got to do it. This is One Way Travel. <laughs> I did what? Mm -hmm. Oh, I remember the show. Get yeah, my face hitting that soft ass bed. That, that's sweet though. We celebrate like kings last night. It's really hard to define travel and what that means. Um, you could say I started traveling really by bike and going to places that I had never been. It doesn't necessarily mean I was staying the night there. I started traveling abroad, if you don't count Canada, about two and a half years ago. And that really comprised of the fact that you can get plane tickets where they might be kind of cheap, but you might have to travel for 30 hours to get there. I found that the world is not as dangerous by any means by what Americans think. Yeah, I'm not going to have you introduce yourself right now. I'm just going to film everything out of order. Well, I moved out of Detroit back in uh, 2011, you know. I plan on coming back to the city, though, real soon since it's, it's coming back and the way it's developing and things like that. The one thing about Detroit, Detroit wants to change, you know. That's that's makes Detroit so, so rare as far as other ghettos or other hoods, other cities around America, you know. People around Detroit, they still believe in Detroit. Um, some of the craziest things I've seen in Detroit, well... They see a lot of shootouts, you know, a lot of stuff going up, you know. My mother being on drugs as a, as a kid, I can remember times, you know, holding her down, taking her money away from her and chasing her up the block so she wouldn't, uh, you know, go out and use drugs or running up in dope houses and, you know, begging her to come home or whatever, not having food on the table and stuff like that. And her telling us to eat imaginary food and, you know, just a, it was a very rough upbringing, but it, it you know, it, it made me stronger and it made me tougher. And a lot of those values that I learned those in those days, you know, it, it really carries on to the way I live my life to this day, you know. Yeah, so what did I escape to was the streets, you know, I found love and uh in, inside of a gang called riverside which is tatted on my arms right here you know and you know as, as we grew up to now we not as vicious as menaced as we used to be but you know as a child you know not having things and seeing you know like jordans and materialistic things and stuff like that it, it makes you want those things and you can't get it and you know it's not a lot of opportunities around so you start start turning into bad shit, you know, like selling drugs and stuff like that. Just got crazy at one point. I remember one time, you know, I bought a sack and I was standing on the corner all day selling selling nickel bags of crack until the police pulled me over. Like, what you doing on the corner? <laughs> selling selling dope all day all day, <laughs> you know? I was like, shit, I was selling candy, you know, and I had to, I had to crack in my ass. <laughs> And they shuffling my pants like this, trying to get it out, and I'm sweating. They're like, why you shivering? I'm like, it's cold out here, sir. And good thing I had my ID on me. They ran my shit or whatever, you know, and they was like, okay. How common do you think that story is? Yeah, that's just like the For Detroit story, people. you know, you know. I was trying, I was in those streets trying to live a life that wasn't me, you know. And as an adult, you know, I realized that, you know, I can't do that type of stuff. Because every day when you out there, you know, your, your life is on the line. But many people choose to do so here. I mean, 
That is yeah, fairly yeah. common. You choose to do so because it's like it's not a lot of options out here. What are you going to do? You know, right. it is a lot of options, but we don't see that. We don't take advantage of that. And the whole hood was in the gang. You know, everybody who I knew, everybody was around us. We was Riverside off Grand River. You know what I'm saying? We was all gang gang. You know, we did what we had to do. We used to just go up to parties and just, you know what I'm saying? Well, everybody would go to parties, go have fun and dance and stuff. We was going to a party to go beat somebody ass and take their damn coat. That was our shit. You know what? I tell you what. But when I was a kid, I see it changing a lot. Because when I was growing up, we wasn't graduating. Like, I could have graduated if I wanted to, but I didn't want to. You know, instead I wanted to do hustle. Go out here in these streets and try to rob and steal and do whatever I had to do, you know? Because they learn it from our mistakes. Right. And that's what a lot of people don't realize, you know? A lot of people say it's just getting worse and that's what you see because it's, it's instant it's on your phone right now yeah. you know it's right it's there on in your TV. face you know you, you see a lot of failure but you don't see it as much as you did as in the past you know what i'm saying you see a lot of young people doing things and changing things you know like i, I see young people you know what i'm saying going to college and they got jobs they working two or three jobs they they want to better they because they don't want to be like what their parents was and what the past was so that's why i say it's getting better you know how y'all doing? Hey, how's Good, it how going? Y'all yeah, recording, man. It's a, it's a documentary about Detroit. Oh, man. Yeah. Yeah. You from Detroit? Oh, all the time. You want to tell your story? Right now, I really feel really actually messed up about it because the fact is, I mean, when Coma Young was in the office, okay, it was different. It was a different ball game. Because Coma Young, if you wasn't a Detroit citizen, you could not patrol in Detroit yeah. area. Yeah. You cannot do that. You got to stay you got to stay yeah. in Detroit if yeah. you're going to be a police in, in Detroit. Mm -hmm. Because some fact is the guys come from across 8 Mile. I mean super cops. I call them. Yeah. They come from over there. They don't know how to maintain or deal with what's going on in Detroit. Right. Because we going to I mean us, us us black folks or whoever we have a mouth on us, and we're gonna ask simple questions. The law don't like it, though, but we're gonna ask why you pull me over. You know why you do this? Why is this happening? We're gonna ask that, and they get real cocky about it. Not racist or not, from white people. They killing our people off. I don't like it. They need to stay across Eight Mile and play Candyland. Okay. Seriously, I done got treated bad. Kicked down, dumped. And after they pulled me from in front of their car and kicked my ass. So what did they initially pull you over for? Just driving. Just, just driving. Uh, a black man over. driving. Yeah, I was going to say, there's that saying, driving while black. Like, yeah, just driving know. black. And that saying is real true. So they pulled you over, and what did they ask you for your uh, ID and stuff like that? Man, they didn't ask me for that, bro. Nothing. They just snatched you right out the car. They said, get out the car. Get out the car. Period. That's it. That's crazy. And it happens. So once they so once they pulled you out the car, they just They searched me. They searched you. I had a couple of bags of weed on me. Okay. Okay. Hey. They treated me like I had a key. Yeah. Oh, 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 they, they got to really rustle me up. Nigga, where you gonna find the gun at? Nigga, the, the That's what they was looking, they thought you had a gun. No, the gun at home with the rest of the drugs. <laughs> 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 no shit. Hey, hey, somebody gotta watch it. Shit, the gun gotta watch the drugs. I ain't just gonna have more meat all. Man, you can do anything in the city for real, for real. Anything. You wanna do anything in the city, anywhere you wanna go, shit. It's, and we got everything in Detroit City for sure, for sure. Crazy shit, shit. That's day to day life. <laughs> That's day to day life. Something always happens. You be like, bro, guess what the fuck I didn't see today? It's always happening. I ain't I had got somebody running from, from the police and they ran in through my backyard. <laughs> Nuts. What I like about Detroit is my people know how to have fun when it comes down to it. No matter where we at, no matter what the event is, we know how to have fun. We know how to make nothing out of something. Uh, I lived in Allen Park for a quick yeah, second or whatever. We lived in Allen Park. On my way home from work, me and my brother was walking and we walking past a power plant. And supposedly some drunk guy crashed into the power plant and that bitch exploded. But why? We didn't notice. That was on the other side of that bitch. We was on one side and we was on a bridge and the whole bridge just started shaking. You can see the whole sky light up red. Everybody in this city like, bro, what the fuck going on? My best friend was like, bro, run. We 
took <laughs> off and got the crazy going. thing and is, didn't stop for forever. As soon Shots as I off. heard the boom, uh, my brother called me like, "What you doing?" Yeah. I, I'm like, "I just, I'm asleep. I just heard a boom. What's going on?" He's like, "Get your ass up, go meet Patrick and them. They close to what you just heard. Yep. So I'm gonna we need all you to book." The gas so I just left everything. We all met up at the gas was. station and went to mom's house. The crazy thing is, I was on Facebook Live, like, just talking shit. Like, we were just walking, like, on Facebook Live that night. And, Tell like, him. bro, like, what's that? My man like, bro, what's that over there? I'm like, bro, is that a mushroom cloud? What <laughs> mushroom the fuck? Cloud. Time to go. <laughs> now you hear is a purr siren. That's when we really start running. We're like, bro, what? <laughs> it's it's over with, it, bro. <laughs> Nuts. I have something to say about Detroit. Um, Detroit, please, if you beefing with this guy right here, just... Walk up to him and kill him. What? Don't kill no just no kids and all that shit. Oh, yeah. Trying to get to him. Oh yeah. Understand what I'm saying? He was like, what? I get you, baby. I get you, baby. what needs to be fixed, what needs to be done, and it's all right in front of your face. Like, right there. You right know there. they're going to open up that zoo at some point. It might, some, I, I got a feeling like they is going to make that group, that zoo better someday. Would I be surprised if it's in with the, within the next two to three years? Not at all. No. Um, it could take 20 years, but I sure as hell know that that shit's going to be open pretty soon. Yeah. At some point. Yeah. And I think that's kind of... And it, it, it'd be a great thing for the, for the city. It'd be... Uh, attraction. There'd be more reason to come down here. You know, more more reason for people to come down here and spend money. Yep. To make it profitable. You know. And somebody had actually tried to buy this island out just a couple of years ago. Yeah, yeah. Some investors from New York they tried to buy the island out. They was going to turn it into a state. You know, you was going to be crazy to live on here. Uh, these had to have a quarter million dollars of assets, have an 800 score of uh, credit. You know, no, no criminal background. background. It was going to be impossible to live over, live live on this island. You know, the same thing what they did to the Babalo Island, which was an amusement park that a lot of people came through. I remember that was the thing that we used to do as a kid. Come on to Babalo Island. It was a boat, you know, that would take you over there to the island. There was a lot of rides and stuff like that, and they had like, like all types of things. It was it was it was a nice place. But anyway, they turned it to a state, and that was the same thing that they was trying to do to this. To this island. So why Detroit? Why Belle Isle? Why Belle Isle? Uh, because you know it's 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 right here inside of Detroit. You know, so that's that's what they're trying to do to Detroit. They're trying to bring people to Detroit, and they thought it would be a good idea to bring people to Detroit by turning this into a state. You know, what I'm saying a nice place to live for people with more welfare means. Do you think a lot of it was just the fact that they saw cheap real estate and said, well, yeah, let's yeah, try most it. definitely, most definitely. You, you know, know, that was number one. It's you know. cheap. I mean, we could even develop it into affordable housing for people and actually still do some good. We could mm -hmm. buy it and revitalize the park and dump all this money into it. But no, we're going to appeal to the wealthy crowd of people who really are going to go live in the northern suburbs. Right, right. Do you think that's why they said no? This is exactly why they said no. You know? They still wanted their part. They still, this is tradition for people. People probably been having their family union here for 50, 70 years. You know right. what I mean? So, you know, they need this place, you know? Right. So before you jump to any conclusion by looking at these neighborhoods, it's easy to assume that things are completely screwed here. One big problem you're gonna see here is arson. There were about 3,400 building fires last year, and most of them the Detroit Fire Department said were fairly suspicious. So poverty here is on the decline. It's a good thing. But this used to be one of the richest cities in the entire world. Now, poverty is at about 35%. We've got about a median income of $26,000 a year, which is very hard to live on here. It makes it even harder being that the city is so spread out and there's no work to be found here. You have beautifully maintained homes that are here, but the problem that you're going to have here is it's going to be next to stuff that's like this. You 
can see fields all the way around here. And that's just where all these houses used to be. Many of them are abandoned, burned down, and just left. It makes it really hard when you're here, working very hard, trying to maintain your neighborhood and your house. And then you have your property values pulled down with this, and it's not even the economics of it, it's the crime that comes in with it, and the danger aspect, especially with people with families and that, that have this. Fisher Automotive Plant right now. It was built in 1919 and abandoned in 1984. This was an auto plant that employed a huge amount of people here. All the ruins here. And it wasn't just those workers, it was those families that relied on it. This was back in the day when you could actually have one person go to work and support a family. This is what Detroit was. This is what Detroit was built on. The fact that you could get out of high school, get a good job in the manufacturing sector, make a good wage, a pension, and actually retire and still be set. Now, it's a dream. It's a fantasy. And the question is whether it's going to continue even in the suburbs where you still can do that, but very seldom will you see it anymore. It's sad for the fact that it's become a radical idea now where you should be able to actually just have a roof over your head, period, from working full time yeah. and having your spouse work full time. Where it used to be, I mean, this fantasy of this American dream where there's no way in hell at any point now would you have somebody that is ever able to work 40 hours a week and make it. Yeah, most people in Detroit not, not nowadays, a, not a they're, real working, they're working two jobs now. They're working two jobs, their roommates are working two jobs, their wives or girlfriends or boyfriends or husbands are working two jobs, mm -hmm. and they're still not making it. Nope. And, and, and I feel like people aren't as angry about it as they should be mm. because all that money goes up to the top anyway. Why aren't you pissed? And I'm mad as fuck about that. I was here about a month before the riot started and I was scared to death. My mother wanted me to come right back home, but I couldn't get home because I couldn't get out. I only had two kids then, and uh, we didn't even go out of the house because we was afraid. But it happened on the west side, and it didn't happen nowhere near us. All we could hear was the people looting and shooting and burning and everything. So I think that happened for about a couple weeks and I decided to stay here because I really liked Detroit and we used to always go to Bell Isle. My family used to always come and visit <laughs> me and we would go to Bell Isle about every week. If it ain't the Bobolo, we was going to Bell Isle. The Bobolo boat burned up now. My daughter used to tell me, Mama, if anything ever happened to you, I'm going to kill myself. I would say, Robbie, if anything happened to you, I'm not going to kill myself, but I'm going to take good care of Michael. And that's what I did. And I love all of my grandkids. And it was 13 of us. I have lost three brothers and two sisters. Now I'm the oldest one. Now they have to look up to me. I lived on Sussex for 40 years, had a beautiful home. And one summer, I was sitting on my porch with the two little girls across the street. Two guys came across my street. I thought they knew the girls because they were 17 and 18. But when they came across my porch, they snatched the little girl's phone and they came across me and they snatched my necklace and my earring. And I went to the corner of the house and said, they not real. <laughs> that necklace is false. <laughs> so my, my grandson and the guys down the street, they all came down to my house. Matter of fact, they came down there with guns. And they was going up and down the neighborhood. And I told them to get back on Sussex because I got those guns in the car and the police is all out here. So they came back. But anyway, 
<laughs> I decided to move. So I came here and I've been here four years. Do you feel like Detroit is um getting better? Do you feel like like, no. like it's getting safer? No. 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 Why it's do you say that? Worse. It's getting worse. It's getting worse. What what makes you say that? All the killing, the babies getting killed and everything. So do you think that there's more of that now than when you yes. were first living here? Oh yes. It's more of it. Do you think it's it's gotten worse within this last three to five years? Yes, I do. Even that? Yes. Even that? Yes. There's a lot to do downtown. I mean, should people come to Detroit? Should people invest their money? Should people start businesses here or, or even come here to see it? I think they can. And it's a lot of business. I don't even go downtown now. And I used to work in the Palms building. My office was in the Palms building. And uh, now I don't even go downtown. I don't even go to Bell Isle. And I had clients all over. Why, why, do you, why don't you go downtown? Only way I go downtown is go to the casino. <laughs> yeah. no. There's just nothing down there for you? No. <laughs> yeah. But for but so you're not saying I'm truthful. That, yeah. <laughs> so you're not saying that it's unsafe, it's just nothing down there for yeah. you. Yeah. Right. But for the people that are touring Detroit, the people that want to come in and have the food scene, for the people that want to learn their history, there's there's a good trip that Yeah, they it's have a good here. trip for them. What do they need to do to change the city? What do we need to do to make the city better? Like all of these guys that's carrying guns, shooting. They need to get rid of them. That's, that's all you hear every time you turn the news on. Somebody got shot. I think a lot of people stay because they wanted to change it. But then you got a lot of people have left the city because right. of all of this. What's, it's the de what's the decrease in population right now? I don't know the actual percentage, but I know it used to be 2 million and we're at about 680 right here now, which is really nothing. I mean, no, compared you're right. To the, I mean, it's nothing. You've got so much empty land here now, you know, just and, and that used to be houses lining the street. Right, and you're finding so many houses are getting burnt down. What about what about Devil's Night and they changed it to Angel's Night? My dad used to work at Motor City Casino, actually, and he worked there as soon as they were building the hotel. He would go up on the roof, and one night it was Devil's Night or Angel's Night, which people don't know what that is a lot of times once you get outside of Michigan, which I didn't realize. And they my dad went up onto the roof of the hotel and he could see count all the fires that were burning because he would was at such they a high point cut down on a lot of that and then they have the curfew hour mm -hmm. and that helps a lot you want to say a closing statement or something yes <laughs> i want to say i'm sorry that y'all didn't get to get me other night but i appreciate y'all <laughs> being in my house <laughs> and i want to say i was up at seven o'clock this morning i said i was gonna fix dinner for you all here it is almost <laughs> 11 and the food is still in there <laughs>